the right time to go to the market? And when is the right time to introduce your product to your prospective customers? Now, as an entrepreneur, these are two key questions you need to ask yourself. In poultry farming, it's going to define if you are going to be a successful farmer or not. Let's dive in how we do this at AfriFarm. In our last vlog, we saw that our buds were close to maturity. And now this makes you wonder, well, do you start looking for market at that moment? Or do you wait until the last day and then that's when you start looking for the market? Now, in both scenarios, I would say it depends at what stage are you in farming. Now, in this vlog, we are going to look at the dynamics when it comes to looking and making your first sales in the market. We are going to explore what we do here at Afri Pharma and how we ensure that we outsell every bird in every production batch. At our last vlog, we saw that majority of our birds were almost getting ready for the market as they were averaging between 1.3 kgs to 1.5 kgs. Now, the major question lies. When is the right time to introduce our product to the market? Now, to answer this question, I want to take you back. I know, right? The right time to go to the market is usually the day before you start your own enterprise. Why do I say this? I know, right? This surprised you. You mean I market my product before producing my product. I know, that sounds crazy, right? But let me tell you, that is usually the best strategy and is actually going to help you win in the marketplace. So, to answer you, the first step to ensure you have a successful sale is doing market research. You had it right. Before you even build your chicken coop, before you even bring your day old broilers, before you even buy your feed, you need to go to the market. You need to interact with your prospective customers and get to understand what is it that they need. And I mean in terms of quantity, in terms of the deliveries, and even you get to understand is there actually demand for that particular product and in this case is broiler is there demand for chicken meat in your market now if you don't do the market research then you will make a huge mistake you should go out there and carry out a market research get to meet your prospective customers get to listen to them get to talk to them Get to understand what they need, in what quantities, and even you'll be able to observe how the market works like. Now, if you do this, you are already succeeding in poultry farming. Now, in our farmer, uh, most of the clients that currently I'm dealing with, I used to engage them before I even built the current structures. Why? Because I needed to understand is there demand for broilers in my current market? And if there is demand, how big is that demand like? Now, depending on the in this kind of information, you'll be able to structure yourself and be able to anticipate the market demand. And this is going to help you become successful in your poultry venture because remember if you go into an industry where the demand is low, then you will end up suffering as a farmer 
But if you go into a market where the demand is high, then you'll be smiling all the way to the bank. And that's why we usually keep on insisting. Market research is what makes you to do your first successful sale. Let's see the second process of ensuring you become successful in making your sales is promotion. Remember we say you've done your market research, you've identified there is a market gap, you've been able to get key contact from the client, you don't sit back because most of the time well it's true the client can look for you then you also need also to understand uh, pottery industry it's a very competitive arena if you don't go all out then nobody is going to know if you exist or not now this takes us to promotion you need to knock those doors you need to get out of your office you need to get out of your farm and visit the town centers. Now, why do I say the town centers? Most of the clients tend to be based in the townships. Now, these are the hotels, these are the butcher shops, these are the choma zones. You need to visit their locations. You need to re-engage them and you need to remind them that you are there, your farm still exists and you have the perfect product for what they are looking for and if you do that then you will definitely make yourself if you don't do that then your product is going to mature and then there will be no one interested in your product now throughout the, this industry I've actually learned that word of mouth is the most powerful form of marketing you can ever use because before even we go to other uh, methods you can utilize you need to physically uh, visit this joint clients need to see you clients need to know the kind of person they are dealing with and if you have not made your first contact my advice would be start with word of mouth start by visiting these premises. Now, if you, uh, if you are able now to establish the contact for the first time, now eventually you can also try to tap into the other forms of marketing. We live in the world where everyone has an access to internet. Most entrepreneurs, most traders, almost everyone in business has a social media account. Now this is a goal for us farmers. Now the question lies is how do you utilize social media to your advantage? The answer is digital marketing. Now when it comes to digital marketing, you can tap into various elements. The question is, do you use this space to your advantage? At Afri Pharma, what we do is we tend to utilize uh, Facebook space whereby we are able to create an advert and then I target that this advert not just to everyone but people who live within my area or people who live within the targeted market you'll be surprised the kind of success I've got from social media most of the clients I have like 20% I was able to get them through social media. You don't need to have uh, complicated skills. You just need to understand, can you be able to take maybe a photo of the box and maybe uh, try to indicate your location and your pricing and maybe you offer deliveries or not and then off the post is gone. And then you will be able to engage with the people. Maybe they might not be interested to buy from you for the first time. But if you can be able to keep this engagement every time you have the buzz, eventually they will gain trust with you. And someone is going to reach to you. And you are going to sell your buzz to them. 
The other form of marketing is you need to utilize your phone. In, I remember a week back I had like a, bl a blog whereby I asked people, what do you have in your hands? Now, as an entrepreneur, one of the most useful yet key tool you have is your phone. And I'll advise you, make that dial count. You remember, I started by going to the market and I believe you're able to get the data you needed. Now, it's the right time to call those people to inform them that you have a product. Because if you don't make that phone call, I assure you, someone will make that phone call and you are going to lose. And phone calls are almost not costly. By the way, if you are to compare between going to the market and making phone calls, phone call is one of the cheapest form of marketing, yet effective form you can be able to drive traffic for your farm. Now you understand why you need to start diaring. You understand once you go to the market, why you need to keep those contacts. It's for your own good, amigo. You need to sell using your phone. The last thing that will also ensure you make uh, successful sales in poultry farming is utilizing referrals. Referrals are very big. And how can you be able to do that? One is you can always start with the network that you have. These are the people, these are the clients you've been engaging. You can always ask them, hey, uh, if you know another trader who might be interested in my product, hey, don't hesitate uh, to give a shout out. And the other way you can try to utilize uh, referrals is on engaging with other farmers. Some farmers, but not all, they are not open, they are upwards. But few farmers out there, they are open. They, they, they want you to succeed, especially if you're just starting out. Just ask them. They will give you a few of their clients. Uh, I know it's, again, it's a competitive world, but I've learned from them. You know, sometimes, for example, here at AfriFarmer, I may not be able to have the orders then. You need to be able to direct this traffic to other people. Now, if you don't ask from these farmers, the chances are you are not going to get the help you need. Now, that's why I keep saying you need to ask for assistance. If you're stuck, go out there from experienced farmers and ask them what kind of client do they deal with. And if they have maybe uh, a short supply, can you be able to fill that? If they agree, well and good. If they don't agree, you can always tap into the methods we have discussed above. And trust me, at the end of the day, you are going to be successful when it comes to making your sales in good time. And the last bit is on customer retention. You don't want to keep on having clients and losing them at the same time. Now, for you to be successful in your sales, you need to retain the first client. Here at AfriFarma, this might come as a surprise to you. The clients I started with earlier last year are the same clients I have as of today, and I've also been able to add other clients on top of that. So my mantra is usually to uh, retain the existing customers and add new customers. That's how I can be able to grow into the market. I know you are asking yourself, do these methods work? Or are they just empty returns? Well, they do work. I want to state here that everything I share in this platform is what we do here at AfriFarmer. At some point, I was at some doubt myself, will I be able to make that first sale? 
I know how doubting it can be, especially if you're just starting out in portrait industry. Now, by doing the market research, by utilizing different promotion uh, strategies, I was able to eventually overcome that fear. And right now, I can sell parts anywhere within the coastal region and maybe anywhere within Kenya. And trust me, I didn't know uh, if I could be able to make the sale. But 12 months later, here we are, producing broilers every month and outselling them every month. As we speak, uh, I've actually been able to get an order to supply 120 parts in the first day of processing. Unbelievable, right? The formula is just right there. You just need to implement it. And other than that, I've also now made arrangement with other clients who are going to collect these bugs, these bugs as they mature progressively. And how do I do that? Well, it's by implementing what I've just shared with you. It's not easy, but then if you do it, it's going to be easy. You need to do that market research. You need to make that phone call. You need to engage with the client in social media. And don't shy away. This is your hustle. You have to do whatever it takes to make that first sale. Because if you don't make that sale, then you're going to have a problem as a poultry farm. And you don't want that to happen. Now, I am super excited as we begin the processing stage. I'm going to share with you the whole journey, how our birds look like. And hey, it's just unbelievable. The other day we were at day one. And look here we are. We are processing our birds. Now this makes you wonder. Is poultry farming worth it? Let's see you in the next video. Bye.